Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we are recording the session for a radio broadcast on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. Feel free to post questions and comments during the session, and we'll try to get, to them, get them answered online. We are particularly pleased to welcome our moderator, Tom Timmon, the host of Federal Drive on the Federal News Radio, 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. Let me turn over the reins to Tom to begin today's discussion. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Our guests today are Ann Duncan, the Chief Information Officer of the Environmental Protection Agency. Maria Rote is the Chief Technology Officer of the Transportation Department. Todd Simpson is Chief Information Officer of the Food and Drug Administration. Melvin Greer is a Senior Fellow and Chief Strategist at Lockheed Martin. And Alan Dare, the District Manager of NetApp's U.S. Public Sector Cloud Team. Great to have you all on the panel this morning. And I wanted to uh, begin by framing the issue. We're talking to today about data and particularly data governance. And of course data has become kind of the currency of federal agencies, of, of the federal government. And so governance is really important to everything else that we do with data. So why don't we begin, just go kind of right down the line and get an idea of the scope and type of data that your agency holds. And I know these are, it's hard to encapsulate in a short time. But give us a rough idea and also generally what the governance structure looks like, looks like right now at your agency. Maria, we'll start with you. So, uh, you know, the types of data that we have just runs um, across the transportation industry. We get tr uh, data from states. Uh, we get it from, you know, motor carriers. You know, when you think about transportation, railroad and motor carriers and all of the aspects of transportation, we do receive quite a bit of information from different entities. Not only do we receive it, we have it, we analyze it, the analytics piece of it, we also share it out. So whether it's with the public, whether it's with the states. So there's um, a lot of data sharing that goes on with transportation. You know, we also share with other agencies when you think about emergency response and critical infrastructure. So it runs the gamut when you when you really talk about the, the world of transportation and data. Um, we recently hired last summer a chief data officer. So we are taking steps to get our arms around the governance and the policy and all of those aspects around data. And you also get data from industry that might be proprietary, used in investigations or whatever. And so you have to use that in the right way, but also protect it. Absolutely. All right. So the chief data officer has been around. Have they kind of established a, a, an office or a role yet? And that's a pretty, that's a, one of the new titles in government. It is. And uh, Dan uh, Morgan is our chief data officer. Again, he started last summer. Um, he was with the department for a while. And, you know, people will say he was the first chief data officer, you know, in the federal government. But I would say that there were a lot of people doing a lot of that type of work with data, even before he started with transportation. But he's really been driving, you know, the data, the governance uh, uh, for transportation. And we laid out last fall a two-year plan and how we're going to lay that out for um, the department. All right. And, Anne, I guess the EPA was started just around the same decade as the Transportation Department. Uh, very different ways of getting data, different sources. Tell us about your data setup and especially the, the governance structure that you have. So EPA has a variety of different types of data. The most mostly are obviously related to environmental data. Uh, we have regulatory data, so data that comes in from the regulated community, whether that is uh, coming from the states, from tribes, directly from industry. So that whole set of data. We also have a lot of scientific data, as you know. EPA is a rule makes rules, and our rules are based on science. And so this, we have scientific data, uh, both basic research and research that's that's generated uh, as part of rulemaking or data that's generated as part of rulemaking. And finally, we have some programs within EPA that are called Right to Know programs that provide information specifically to communities about uh, toxics and, and chemicals used in their communities and that, that share that data with them. We have, a, have pretty robust uh, programs to share data uh, around the agency, uh, outside the agency. We have a lot of data sets um, on uh, data.gov. I think we've got one of the largest number of data sets out there of any agency. And then uh, we also have uh, programs that share data with the public. In addition to the Right to Know programs, a variety of tools that the public can use. We're investing heavily right now in uh, data analytics and in, in identifying how we can uh, use data across our data sets. Uh, for example, uh, you can compare 
uh, how a company reports uh, to one program, to how they report to another program, and identify anomalies, whether those are errors or whether they're uh, criminal acts, and then our enforcement folks can look at those and follow up on those. And it's safe to say, too, that EPA data has historical component because you've been gathering, say, on a particular source or a particular area that might need cleanup, whatever the case might be, over a period of sometimes many years. That's correct. And it's what's really interesting about uh, some of that data is data that wasn't very interesting when it was collected 30 or 40 years ago, particularly related to climate, has become very interesting now. So it's a real challenge to figure out what data you should be keeping when you don't know what data might be interesting in the future. Okay. Uh, Todd, at the FDA, a new, one of the newer CIOs in government, so welcome to that job. Thank you. Uh, tell us more about the FDA data, which, uh, as we, again, extensive across many domains. So similarly uh, to Maria and Ann, uh, the FDA has a wide variety of data, ranging from research data, regulatory data, uh, inspection data, proprietary information data, trade secret data. Uh, it really runs the gamut. Um, I think that um, we have a lot of challenges uh, compartmentalizing the different data types, um, and we are currently working um, to flush out that data governance model right now. We have a data governance advisory board that's been, uh, been around for a couple of years, and its job is really to put forth that framework that needs to be in place that will deliver that underlying technology that will uh, allow us to deliver our, our, our data our data needs in in a way that our customers can actually make sense of our data and keep it safe at the same time. And so that means the data governance setup that you have is in flux, or it's still trying to gel into something that uh, that you envision. Yeah, I I, th I think that it's just a, a natural condition of emerging technology and um, the the field of science in general that there are um, you know gen genomic sequencing um, is. Um, is uh, a, a big endeavor right now that maybe wasn't um, um, something that we talked about 20 years ago. And, and now, you know, it's, there are additional requirements out there to process DNA-related information. Um, and, uh, and so the processing power needs to be there. The bandwidth needs to be there. And, and most importantly, the integrity and in the data needs to be there. Okay. Uh, Melvin Greer from Lockheed, uh, you know, long history of involvement in a very intimate way with federal agencies. So in probably in a lot of ways, Lockheed is a holder of data, but also a, a supplier of services on data. What do you see across the government as you, as you look across the agencies? Well, Lockheed Martin is in a very unique and privileged environment and with this relationship with government as the uh, largest provider of IT services to the federal government for the last 21 years. We take our relationship with them very seriously. And as stewards of the nation's data, you know, we uh, are very, very cognizant of the need to be aware of the various regulatory requirements. We hold some data that's re uh, required to be held for the life of the republic, everything from publicly available data, data for citizen services or data for transportation services, all the way through uh, research data for deep space exploration or energy management, and of course, uh, the very classified data for our military operations and the support of our, our troops. So, you know, our, our real responsibility is to take a look at all of these types of data and apply the various levels of cybersecurity require, requirements to those data types and ensure that as stewards, we uh, manage that data appropriately and apply the right, right uh, technologies to them. It's absolutely clear as well that data is the lifeblood of government, or is, is becoming that way now. And we are very much interested in the, in the development of the kinds of data science capabilities that allow the government to harness the power and the value from that data. And looking across the number of agencies that you might be doing business with, do you see a disparity in the way data governance is carried out? I think most agencies are taking it very seriously. I think we've heard three examples here, but all of our customers are taking it very, very seriously, holding it very, very closely, and making very conscious and meaningful decisions about how they're going to uh, uh, aggregate and pull data in, how they're going to analyze that data, and then how they're going to use that data and share it across their government constituencies to make better decisions. And so, Alan Dare of NetApp, is it safe to say that at the federal agencies you deal with, that whole idea of data, how you house it, how you govern it, how you manage it, is pretty much of a top center of mind uh, endeavor these days? Absolutely. Uh, we hold data from uh, 
a lot of agencies throughout the federal government, uh, state, local, as well as the private agencies. Uh, we see all of our federal customers uh, coming back to us and saying, what, how can you help with data governance? Where is the technology going? And you can see that depending on the type of data, depends on the criticality of it. Is it holding uh, PII data, personally identifiable information? Um, is it a secure data set? Or is it uh, equivalently land usage information, right, that you want to share for the public? And depending on, on that spectrum, depends on sort of the data governance requirements. But, you know, the, right now in the current environment, everybody's asking, what can you do to help on that data governance front? And one of the things we're seeing on the technology pieces that we're pushing into is different types of storage technologies, like object-oriented technologies um, to, for the managing the storage, where we're putting metadata along with the data. And once you can start tagging that data set, you can start tagging the security uh, requirements with it. And that's some of the areas that we're pushing into to try to help all of our federal and uh, SLED customers. Now, there is some guidance coming out from the oversight agencies and the, and the scientific agencies. And uh, Maria, we'll, we'll call on your former experience with FedRAMP, but FedRAMP has information on data. It's not just about a cloud service, from what I understand. And also, uh, NIST uh, has guidance. And so, w where do you go for information from the federal government itself if you want to kind of get on top of data governance and some of the issues around it? You know, when you, when you really approach data governance, um, think about it as an organizational approach to data and information management, right? So I'm going to turn this around a little bit. So when you, when you talk about that governance, while you have all of the security controls, you know, you talk about FedRAMP at the moderate, 325 controls. You also have in NIST um, the 853 Rev 4 Appendix J. Right, which talks about One there's my 30, favorites. right? There's the, you read it all the time. <laughs> um, there's what 38 controls in there that that really um, talk about the privacy of data, how you handle it. Um, what you do with that. So, you know, it's not just one piece that's, you know, security, privacy, and the governance are all tied together around that, whether you're at the low, moderate, or at the high baseline. Okay, and uh, we'll toss that question to Ann. Where do you go for guidance, and what are the expert sources that EPA finds that can help you get around this whole data governance topic? So there's, in terms of where we go, obviously from a security standpoint, we rely heavily on FedRAMP, on DHS, on on our partners that help us understand um, what to what to fully protect, you know, what what requires the most protection and how to protect it. Right? Um, in terms of of other sources of support for data governance, obviously uh, we need to talk to our industry partners. We need to talk to other people. Um, in the government about what they're doing with data, and then we need to evaluate our own internal needs because everyone's got different needs for data governance. All right, so uh, 853, Revision 4, Section J, that's one of your favorites too then. Yeah, yeah. Appendix J. I'm, I'm slightly less familiar with FedRAMP than, than Maria. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Uh, Todd, what about the FDA? I mean, where do you, where, where do you, how do you, where do you find information that you need to move on with this? Um, I, I think the same sources, FedRAMP and OMB, uh, I have a, um, a, a very, um, good CISO at the FDA that guides me, and uh, I, I think that he is um, he errs on um, the side of caution. Uh, what what we found at the FDA, I like that in a CISO. <laughs> yes, it's good. It's a good quality. Uh, and what I've what I've seen at the FDA is that about eighty percent of our data is uh, is um, FISMA moderate, and uh, and then we have maybe five to seven percent is high and the rest is is low and the low isn't a problem from a fed ramp perspective and we've already entered into um, cloud partnerships with with that low data with that low data it's the uh it's the moderate that's still tricky even though the guidance is there and the pathway is there we're, we're finding that um, those moderate systems need to be ATO'd every time um, additional c controls need to be considered NIST controls. And, uh, and I, I see that, you know, at some point in the future, there's going to be a, um, a landslide of, of demand for high in the cloud, uh, but it seems like a long way away. All right, so Alan, that brings up a question that uh, gets back to a point you made, too, is people are looking at different storage technologies, infrastructure pieces to be able to secure data and make sure that it's subject to the governance they need. But the FedRAMP idea brings in cloud, in which case the infrastructure is not the agency's own. So how do you marry up those two uh, ideas where you might have local or federal data center or commercial data center 
a storage and use of data. So what we've seen is uh, a large demand for securing the data and making sure that they understand how the data would move in between their local system and in a cloud service provider. And we've worked on a lot of technologies to help secure that, one of which is we allow them to set data beside a uh, hyperscaler versus in it. Um, we have several federal agencies that are looking to do that today, and where they could take that same data set, have mobility with it, but at the same time encrypt the data set so that the cloud service providers can both use it, use it but at the same time, they can control and maintain stewardship. Okay. Well, I think th that brings us to a good place to take a short break, which we will do right now. Our guests today are Alan Dare. He's the District Manager for NetApp's U.S. Public Sector Cloud Team. Melvin Greer is a Senior Fellow and Chief Strategist at Lockheed Martin. Todd Simpson is the CIO of the Food and Drug Administration. Maria Rote is the Chief Technology Officer at Transportation. And Ann Duncan is the CIO of the Environmental Protection Agency. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. This is Navigating Cloud Contracting, Who Owns the Data, sponsored by NetApp and Lockheed Martin, here on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com.